Turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 8, verse 27 to 30. Mark chapter 8, verse 27 to 30. Please follow along as I read. Jesus went out, along with his disciples, to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he questioned his disciples, saying to them, Who do people say that I am? They said to him, saying, John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he continued by questioning them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. And he warned them to tell no one about him. You know, the disciples had the privilege of being first-hand eyewitnesses of the life and ministry of Christ. Uh, They were given the opportunity to see him with their own eyes, to hear him with their own ears, to touch him with their own hands. Some of what we, uh, they had witnessed, is recorded for us in the New Testament Gospels. In Mark's Gospel, the disciples witnessed Jesus performing a number of different miracles. He calmed the storm at sea in chapter 4. He casted out demons, healing the woman who had a 12-year hemorrhage, raising Jairus' daughter from the dead in chapter 5. He fed the 5,000 and walked on water in chapter 6. Then he fed 4,000 in chapter 8. But even after the disciples had witnessed Jesus performing miracle after miracle after miracle, they still couldn't figure out who he was. They still didn't get it. In Mark chapter 8, after the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus heard his disciples arguing over the fact that they had no bread. And so the Lord rebukes them in light of what they had just seen him do, performing miracles of feeding. He says to them, Do you not yet see or understand? Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? Immediately after this, Mark records Jesus performing another miracle. And this is in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 26. When Jesus and the disciples arrived in Bethsaida, a blind man was brought before him to be healed. We learned that this blind man was unable to see things clearly. He was only able to see indistinguishable objects. He described, he sees people like trees walking around. Everything to him was blurred. Everything was out of focus. It was only after Jesus healed him did he begin, and Mark puts it, to see everything clearly. Well, this brings us to our passage, which we've just read in verse 27 to 30. After healing of this blind man, Mark records a very important conversation that takes place between Jesus and his disciples. As they were on the way to Caesarea Philippi, Jesus begins by asking them a question. Who do people say that I am? And their response was, well, some people say that you're John the Baptist. Some people say you're Elijah. Others say that you're one of the prophets. According to public consensus, Jesus was simply a prophet of God, a spokesman for God. Jesus then follows up with an even more important question. But who do you say that I am? The Lord wasn't interested in what the crowds were thinking. He was more interested in what his disciples were thinking. He wanted them to verbalize their understanding of who he is. When Jesus asked the question, Peter asks us a question. Peter always seems to be the first one to speak up. And uh, keep in mind that when, Jesus, when Peter speaks up, he's a spokesman for the 12. What he says normally reflects the attitude, the viewpoints, the thoughts of the disciples. Peter's response was, you are the Christ. Now, Matthew records for us, in uh, Matthew's account of this, 
He records for us a more detailed response of Peter. In Matthew 16, 16, he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, the disciples finally came to the conclusion that Jesus is the Son of God. They now understand that he is the promised Messiah, the anointed one, the Savior. Now the question is, what happened? I mean, a moment ago, he was rebu- the Lord was rebuking them for the lack of understanding, but now they recognize who he was. How did this suddenly come to a clear profession of faith? Well, Mark doesn't reveal to us in his gospel what happened, but Matthew does. And in Matthew uh, chapter 16, after Peter's clear profession of faith, Jesus responds in verse 17, Blessed are you, son of Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who's in heaven. See, Peter and his disciples didn't come to this conviction on their own. They didn't analyze all the facts and put all the pieces of the puzzle together. They didn't somehow logically, intellectually, scientifically figure out everything in their minds and come to a conclusion. The only reason Peter and his disciples finally came to understand who Jesus was is because God the Father chose it to reveal it to them at this time. You see, the disciples were just like the blind man in Bethsaida in Mark chapter 8. They couldn't see anything clearly. Everything was blurred. Everything was out of focus. No matter how many miracles they saw Jesus perform or how many sermons they heard him teach, they were unable to see clearly who he was. See, the disciples' problem wasn't intellectual. Their problem was spiritual. They were spiritually blind. Therefore, spending more time reflecting upon what Jesus taught or what Jesus did wasn't going to help them. Seeing Jesus perform more miracles wasn't going to convince them. Hearing Jesus answer all their skeptical questions wasn't going to persuade them. It wasn't until the Lord opened their eyes to the truth did they finally and clearly see and understand who he was. You know, before all of us as as believers came to faith in Christ, we were blind just like the disciples. It is only when God the Holy Spirit opened our eyes to the truth did we finally come to understand who he is and the truth of the gospel. We came to believe in Christ only because he, in his sovereign grace, opened our eyes and enabled us to see the truth. If God didn't do that for us, we would never be able to see the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ. What a marvelous and amazing thing God has done for us. We were once blind, but now we see You know, communion is a time for us to affirm these truths, to affirm that God has revealed to us and enabled us to see. Every time we participate in the communion elements, we are declaring and affirming who Christ is and what he has done for us. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into this world to die on the cross for everyone who believes in him. It says in 1 Corinthians 11, 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The bread is a symbol that reminds us of the body of Christ, which was crucified on the cross for us. The cup is a symbol of the blood of Christ, which was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. If you're here this morning, you're a Christian, you confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, to be your Lord and Savior, if you believed in him alone to save you from your sins, then we invite you to join us in our time of communion in affirming our faith in him. If you're here this morning and you don't profess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, 
you haven't trusted in him to save you from your sins, then this time of remembering Christ is not for you. I would encourage you not to take the elements, but to simply pass them along to the next person and to think about who is Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ asked you, who do you say that I am, how would you respond? How you answer that question is vitally important to where you will spend eternity. I pray that God would open your eyes to the truth so that you can see who Jesus is and your need to believe in him in order to be saved from your sins. If you have any questions, I would encourage you to talk to one of the elders of the church or maybe the person that invited you, and they'll try to explain to you more about what the Bible says. Before we participate in communion, we're exhorted in God's word to examine ourselves. We want to make sure that we've confessed any known sins before the Lord, that we're walking by the Spirit, that we're living in obedience to his word before we participate in this time of remembrance. So after you receive the elements, take them on your own when your heart is ready. Gentlemen, please come forward and service the elements. <laughs>